I'm going to share something with y'all. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it, and this has been like a therapy session. So this week on Raw, the fight within uh, the final episode of season one, I'm delighted to be joined by one of the, the hottest prospects in not just British boxing, but world boxing, Dennis McCann. Uh, much appreciate you coming onto this podcast. A little bit of a different vibe today. You, you ready for that, Dennis? Yep, I'm ready, mate. I'm ready. I'm born ready. <laughs> um, right, let's start you in really easy then. Um, what was your kind of first ever memories of boxing? Bear in mind, you're, you're 21. So whenever that was, what were your first ever earliest memories of boxing? I remember watching all the Box Nation shows years ago at Frank Pan. They were my favourite. I used to watch them, I used to watch them literally, me and my dad, all the time. Um, I've seen some serious wars in there, like the Bradley Skate phase, Frank, Frankie Gavin, and there's been some serious scraps in there, do you know what I mean? But um, also as well, my older brother was was a, was a great amateur. I remember watching um, the the schoolboys years ago, and it was a really big thing. And uh, he became a schoolboy champion, and he was a very very good fighter. And yeah, basically them them type of memories there. Is, that's what that's what I remember. Watching my older brother, um, I used to go around torturing torturing everyone, on the minibus on the way up up to the up to the boxing and stuff, shave people's eyebrows off and stuff like that. There, so I was definitely a bit of a menace. Dennis, it's weird that you say that your earliest memories of Box Nation because IFL started like 12 years ago, which you would have been, what, nine years old. So when you're talking about Box Nation, that was my early memories of when IFL started. So you hear you talking about that, those were your first ever memories of boxing. It's, it's quite mad for me to listen to, to be fair. I used to watch it literally, me and my dad used to watch, watch it literally every night. Um, it has been some serious, that's the, that was the best days of boxing, I think, in my opinion. The best days of boxing. Do you remember the first ever fight you went to? What, amateur or pro? Uh, let's do both. Let's do first ever amateur and first ever professional fight you went to. My first ever professional fight was when I watched Jenny Kyle fight at the York Hall. And, uh, and, and, and the big fight I went to was Martin J. Ward when he won the, the European title. He was a good friend of mine. Um, amateur, my older brother. Um, he, he was, he, he, I just remember watching him. Uh, I used to follow his like footsteps, and I used to have a bowl cut around my head. I'm telling you, I used to torture everyone, punch people between the two legs. Honestly, everyone, everyone who used to walk past me used to put their hands between the two legs, and they know I used to punch them there. <laughs> Jesus, obviously, that's where you get your nickname from, The Menace. Yeah, yeah that's where I come from. <laughs> um, I always, like I said, I like to ask everyone uh, each week about who kind of inspired them in some sort of way, boxer-wise, the first ever fighter they kind of took notice from. And you'll want to be quite interesting because you're only 21. You know, a lot of people I've interviewed kind of, they track back to kind of 10 years even before that, depending on how, how old they are. I always say, my one's always Prince Asim Hamid, the first person boxer that got me in love with the sport. But for yourself, who was the first one that you really took note of, Dennis? Um, it was my older brother, as I said earlier on. It was my older brother that made me really want to box. Um, but same, it's funny you said that, pr probably Prince Azim as well. I remember watching him years ago, and where he's so cocky, I'm a little bit cocky. Um, and people say we've got similar styles, and uh, yeah, I reckon probably Prince Azim. It's funny because obviously since you turned professional, uh, there's been comments and uh, comparisons between you, yourself and, and Prince Asim Hamid, and we've spoken about this before, but I suppose if that was someone that you kind of looked up to when you was very, very young, then I suppose that's a great thing to be even mentioned in the same breath as someone like Prince Asim Hamid. 100%. Um, listen, the man's a legend in the game, and he? he always has been. One of my favourites of all times, and probably one of the, one of the best British fighters of all times, isn't he? So... So hopefully I can just follow his footsteps. I won't be doing bad, will I? Well, yeah, I suppose. If you, I suppose you'll take half of his career. No, you you want to go for the full lot. I want them all now. I want them more than more. I want them more than more. I want, I want all the belts in about three, four different weights. <laughs> right, we're going to play a little game now before we really kind of get started into this, right? So devise this thing, this question um, about a boxing 
tag team situation. So let me just picture this for you. Imagine five on five in the boxing ring. So it's boxing rules. So you and a team of four people against a team of five people. You don't know who the opponents are. Who would you pick to go, bearing in mind it's only boxing rules for this first part, who would you pick to go alongside you? What other four people? They don't have to be boxers. They can literally be anyone. Someone picked the Incredible Hulk to go in there or the Ultimate Warrior. People have picked really random people that they'd have in, in that situation. So who would you go for? Um, Prime Mike Tyson. Yeah. Tyson Fury because he's a big old lump. Yeah. Just so he can grab a hold of him. Uh, who else? Who else? I ain't picking no small guys because there's so much those small guys can do. Um, yeah, Prime Mike Tyson, Tyson Fury, AJ because he's got the bat, he's got the big bang and he. Okay. Chisora because he's a game fucker. He swings him. He's game. He can he can be in the front line or I'll chuck him straight in first, take a few out first. That's four. That's four. That's four. So you would have Fury, AJ, Chisora, and Mike Tyson. You wouldn't even have to turn up to this, would you? You could just kind of sit back and watch what happened. I'd be the guy who's just um, just behind them all. I'd probably jump over one shoulder and punch one and just stand back behind them. Too big, they're too big. <laughs> all right, well, this is a... OK, the flip side to this, then. Um, if you was to pick a team for a five-on-five -five street fight... Now, we're not endorsing street violence. Obviously, this is just a fantasy question for this podcast. Just want to make that clear. Um, but street rules now... No weapons, but street rules. So you could use elbows, feet, whatever, knees. You can do what you want. Who do you pick in that alongside you? Well, good question. I've picked Fury again. I've definitely picked Fury again. Because he's a, he's got, he's a traveller and he's got, he's got a heart of a lion. He definitely wouldn't jack. Uh... Sounds silly, but I'll probably break, maybe, maybe, um, what's his name? From the UFC, the heavyweight, what's his name? Uh, probably pick Brock Lesnar, because he can just run in and grab him. Grab a hold of him, will he? Who else? I'll pick myself, because I'm a hard cunt. Well, you're in it anyway, so it's you, Fury, Brock Lesnar, that's three, and, two more. And Kugan, I'll probably pick you, because I heard you're a bit of a hard nut as well. On the street, yeah, I would have gone. You're the only one that's picked me to go on the street team. Keep that in there. Go on. I ain't gonna run away. I might get beat to death, but I'm not gonna run away. Yeah, it's the Sri Lankan warrior. Yeah. I'm gonna pick you. And uh, I pick Billy Joe because he's a hard nut as well. What a team. Me, you, Billy Joe, Tyson Fury, Brock Lesnar. Unbelievable. The Sri Lankan gypsy they call you, don't they? Yeah, that is, <laughs> that is a nickname that I've accustomed over the years. Thank you. Um, that was interesting, but thank you for picking me. The only one that actually thought to pick me in it. Nice one, I appreciate that. Yeah, and I won't let you down if this ever yeah. happens. Hopefully it doesn't. Um, interesting question now for you. Do you ever think about, or can you think about, what you'd be doing if you hadn't got into boxing in the whole industry? But you're a fighter, so if you hadn't done that, what do you think at this age you would be possibly doing? That's a good question. That you, ne you never really know. You know, just I think that I believe in, I'm a bit strong believer in like destiny. But um, maybe I could be getting around with getting around the wrong people. I can meet the wrong people if I weren't in the gym. Um, I could be at a party and you don't know. That's what my older brother did. He, he went on the wrong road, partying and messing about with girls and stuff like that. I feel that like boxing saved me a little bit. I was a bit wild years ago as a kid. And um, all I know now is eat, sleep, train. That's all I do every single day. I live the life as an athlete. Uh, the worst thing I'd probably do is have a little mocktail here and there. <laughs> a little pumice star martini probably once a year on Christmas or something like that. But um, no, I, mate, I could be getting in trouble. You don't know, do you? You just don't know. I feel that like boxing saved me massively. So I, I remember speaking to you about this in previous interviews about for yourself and like I said a lot of different travellers in boxes that I've spoke to have kind of said something kind of similar but you, you've you always said that yeah with boxing if you wasn't doing that that you might have gone down that path but if I was to say to you that for your career like whatever you wanted to do I think I've spoke to people on this podcast where they've said they might have been doing painting and decorating 
they, they don't know, but as a profession, what would you think you'd be doing? I reckon I'd probably be a builder with my dad. Probably in the, the building industry. But I'm um, getting stuck in. Thank God I'm not, though. <laughs> but do, you ever, do you ever think to yourself, like, what, you know, what, could be, what could have been really if you weren't so determined and you were focused on from a very young age of that's what I want to do and that's the only thing I'm going to do? Do you ever think about if that wasn't the case, then, like you said, you don't know what could have happened? Yeah, 100%. I think my dad's a very, very clever man. What we done years ago was when I was an amateur, um, I'd go to work all day long. Um, and I'd be labouring with my dad and working hard. And just I think he done that on purpose, though, just to give me, just give me a taste of how hard it actually is, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I used to work all day long. And I thought there, I had my work boots on, I'd travel three hours to, to my to me boxing gym, Repton Boxing Club. Um, and I'd train for probably two, three hours again. I'd be getting home. I was 11 years old. I look about 11 now, but back then, I was 11, I looked about six. I had my little backpack on me. My backpack was bigger than me. I was about 29 kilos. And I'd be walking through the whole of, the whole of central London with my backpack on. And um, yeah, I think it gave me, it, it, I just do labour work. I, I realised how hard that really was, you know what I mean? I feel like it gave me, that gave me more fire in my body. I can't lose, you know what I mean? I, I know I can't lose. And that's why I won't lose. Do you remember outside of the ring, the first ever kind of serious fight or like argument that sticks in your brain you ever got into, like away from anything to do with boxing? No, believe it or not, I'm a quiet, believe it or not, I'm a quiet kid. I might be a bit cocky, but um, no, I've never had a fight outside before. Um, I'm not a very argumentative person, I just, I don't get time to cook, I'm training two, three times a day. The other day I get off a Sunday, I'm, I'm probably lying in bed all day. But no, I don't, I don't argue, I'm not an argument, argumentative person. Just train, eat, sleep, and um, just try and get to that world title. So even as a kid, like I'm talking when he was like, I don't know, I'm just going to chuck in an age of like eight, nine, ten. You're telling me at no point did you get into any kind of fight away from kind of the boxing thing. I mean, you're the first person, if you are, on this podcast, everyone has said at some point they had got into some kind of altercation, whether they was a very young kid. Um, but you're telling me that that hasn't happened? I'll tell you what, I just remembered one there now. I remember being at a football pitch years ago, I was about, I was about 10. Funny you said that. And um, yeah, yeah, I do remember actually, it was on the AstroTurf. I remember them footballs, Kugan, when you have them, uh, like a Wolverine's hand, you know what I'm saying? Yes, remember? Yes, yes. You kicked it, I'm telling you, straight in my face, it was freezing cold outside. And um, I, was, I was always a bit of an angry kid as well. So I started chasing me, he started running, I think he realised. I, I, I think I did give it to him rough, I'm not going to lie. I beat him up pretty bad. That was one. That was only one. Right. Not a bad record then, to be no, fair, is it? But you're 21, so it's a bit of a difference. Because when I'm interviewing people that are older, obviously, yeah. they've got more stories because of, of their age thing. But I suppose if you found boxing pretty early in your life, then that must have instilled a little bit of discipline straight away when you were like a kid, basically. Literally, yeah. I've been boxing since I'm five years of age. Literally boxing since I'm five years old. Do you remember a time where you felt like you were fighting a losing battle, something that was happening in your life, no matter what you did, it just, it was a losing battle, but you kept fighting. Any things come to mind over your 21 years of life? Um, listen, I think we've all had ups and downs. Uh, well, I've, I've had some now, even now really. I have a kid, it's got a kid, I've got a kid now as well, so just trying to, trying to fight, I've got something to fight for as well, which makes it even better for me. Split up with, with me, with me ex and stuff like that. So um, yeah, but it's got to keep strong. You got someone's got to fight their mind battles. We all we all get them, don't we? And um, we all get a bit bit down and stuff like that. But you just got to keep keep going. Yeah, I suppose sometimes again, it's it's different to hear your take on this question because everyone goes through battles in life, and some that you think. I ain't going to win this, but you keep trying anyway. And I think that's the important thing in life, isn't it? Whether you're, you're, you are fighting a losing battle, you keep trying. And I don't mean in a boxing sense, I mean in life in general. 100%. Listen, we all, I've had mental health a few times and um, I've had to keep strong. And I've, luckily, I'm very, very lucky and thank, I thank God for it. I've got a very good family around me. So they, they, they know, they, as soon as they see me, they know. So, I mean, boxing is a very lonely game. When you're in training camp especially, all you're doing is eating meal preps and training, you're by yourself every day. No one can fight for you. No one can spar for you. 
If it's snowing outside, you've got to get up and go outside and run. Do you know what I mean? So it, 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 no one can do that for you. Mm. And you can't hide behind no one. And it all shows in the, in, the, in the boxing ring. It's a lonely game, boxing. Lonely, lonely, lonely game. People don't realise that. People just see the fight inside of us. But behind the scenes, I've had, I've had a few problems going behind the scenes. And, um, and you've, got to, you've, got to, you've got to train through that. For yourself, again, being as young as you are, what, what causes does Dennis McCann believe in? And I've asked people, a lot of people talk about, um, you know, they feel strongly about mental health, they feel strongly about depression, um, etc. All these different things that people feel strongly about in their life, uh, whether they've been affected by something or someone they know has been affected by something. But what, is, what do you feel strongly about? Like, away from boxing, what do you feel strongly about that's worth fighting for, like, causes-wise? What do you mean by that? Well, look, to, to some people, for example, like I've spoke to some people on this podcast where they've said that, you know, where they know people that have gone through uh, mental health things, uh, issues, uh, or they know people that have been affected by mental health. So they feel strongly about the cause of, of mental health and they, you know, they want to talk about it, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not asking you to talk about it. I'm just asking yeah. what, what causes like that in the world that happen? It doesn't have to be that. Do you believe in? Well, I'll tell you one other story for me as well. Um, a first time pro, um, had three, four fights, was on top of the world, maybe no maybe more, maybe six fights, seven fights in. Um, and I, I was hiding this. I have I got one kidney, and I and no one knows this, I got, I got one kidney. So I didn't know that, to no, be fair. No, no, I c I kept I keep it quiet. But I have one I have one kidney. Still still don't stop me from being a machine that I am though. But um no, I've got one kidney and the bo boxing ball control found out about it. It took my license away. So I was thinking, I've worked all my, all my life for this. Um, I've worked all my life for this since I'm five years of age. I put all my eggs in one basket. And I was thinking, well, what's going to happen here? And I thought, I didn't think I was going to get my license back. So I was crying, I was upset. I was, I was really, really down for about a month and a half. I didn't get it back for. And that was probably the lowest I was in my whole life. The lowest moment in my life, that was it. Wow. Again, like I know, I keep referring to your age, but it is uh, it's not, it is very difficult to listen to you talking like that at 21. Do you know what I mean? At 21, I don't even think I kind of comprehended all these kind of issues that you've probably gone through in your life. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100. percent It was the worst thing in the world because it's hard to explain to you. It's not you're not a boxer, but. Someone like me, you put so much into the game. No one, I don't believe a lot of people train as hard as me. Uh, even me, me trainer, he, even he tells me slow down and this, that. I'm a, I'm a lunatic in the gym. But I know what I want in life. And, and, and it was all getting taken away from me. And it was possibly one of the worst, worst feelings in my whole life. But getting the back was the best feeling in my whole life. Did you struggle to deal with that, like, mentally? Definitely, definitely. I was mentally down. I, I never left my room for, for a couple of weeks. and I wasn't really eating much, to be honest with you. I wasn't even eating. Um, yeah, it was probably one of the lowest moments of my life. How did you come through that? How did you kind of come away from that, put yourself into a better place? How did you do that? I'll tell you how. Me, me trainer Al, thank God, I'm, I'm very lucky as well. Me trainer Al, um, he's not just me trainer, he's one of my, one of my best mates. And he, he, he got me back, he, he put, put me back in the gym. I never leave the gym. I mean, you, I've, I've, I've had fights and I went there the next day. He knew, it was like, he knew I was really, really down, so he was ringing me every day. I wanted me answering the phone. Bang, he got me back in the gym. And I went to work with him for a couple of days, and I was going training, and I was up, going for little Costa coffees. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 my trainer, Al, great man. Dennis, what would you say, again, away from boxing, what are the everyday battles that you have in your life, would you say? Day to day, when you wake up in the morning to when you go to bed, what are the battles that you have to encounter away from boxing? The battles is where I've got such a strict lifestyle that when my fights are over and stuff like that. I'm not a massive wild fella, but I'm still only 21, you've got to remember that. So I've got my friend FaceTiming me, <coughs> having a good time, so I'm sitting in bed, thinking, you know what, I'd like to be there. Saturday night again, me, all my friends FaceTime me again. Ah, oh, you should have come. And uh, I, I wake up the next morning thinking, like, thank God I didn't go. Do you know what I mean? But um, like, as I said, I ain't, I ain't experienced much in life. I, I was married um, at 18 years old, do you know what I mean? So I've been tied down. 
you've experienced more than I have in that respect because I've never been married. Mm-hmm. But you, you have actually experienced, sorry to cut you there, you have actually experienced a lot more than what you think you have because at 21, like I said to you, you've, I mean, aside from your boxing career, you've been pro a little while, not that long, but a little while now. You've been married, you've got a child. These things don't happen normally until kind of, yeah, well, yeah, 30, etc. So you have experienced quite a lot of what the majority of normal whoever, 21-year-olds, uh, people that you know around the same age, wouldn't have experienced, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I agree. I think I'm very mature. I've been very mature since a very young age. But um, I, f- I find them all as learning curves. They are learning curves. I want to get married again, put it that way. <laughs> but what, what you said there about, when I said to you about the everyday battles that you face in life, is so interesting to listen to you talk uh, your perspective about battles at that age because you are 21 and these are meant to be... When I was 21, all I wanted to do was go out. Go out. I weren't drinking uh, when I was 21 at all. So I'd go out, but I wanted to always go out and be out. So for yourself... Again, peer pressure, people around you, but they know. People close to you will know that that's your life now, even though you might get, like you said, the odd FaceTime, etc. But um, it's interesting to see that that's a thing that you have to kind of resist, because if you don't, then you're not going to be where you are in your life, in your career. No, 100%. I feel, I feel like all these little silly things, miss parties, um, I, miss, I, miss, I miss everything, really, mostly everything. I miss, miss food. I miss out on food a lot. All I eat is meal preps. After fights, I get three, four weeks off. I don't even come off. I'm in the gym back on the Monday, but I like my Harry bows. I'm a fat fucker, I like my Harry bows. Um, so I miss out on food, meeting up with friends, uh, so, so, so much stuff. But when it comes to me boxing, I'm very, very selfish. And um, I don't mean that in a bad way, I'm, I am selfish. I remember I mean, me, the morning we went, I was sparring that morning. So if I got a black eye or something, I, I, I was pretty fucked, you know what I mean? Sorry about my language. But then um, I was sparring in the morning, we went and everything. I mean, we got up really early at seven in the morning. I went down to the box gym, and I was sparring that morning. So when it comes to boxing, I am very, very selfish. That is one of the most incredible things I've ever heard. Not just on this podcast. You were sparring. Hold on, on the day of your wedding. That morning, yeah. That morning, we went. <laughs> My God, what, what would have happened if you'd like just I don't know slipped and took one? I don't know what what would have happened then. Come into your wedding with a black eye, but I suppose you knew that that was a possibility if you're sparring on the day of your wedding. All right, if that happened, I reckon she would have come in and hit me, give me another black eye on the other side. <laughs> oh my god, you definitely have lived more than uh, most 21 year olds. Um, when was the last time, or talk to me about a time that you uh, you felt you were having to fight back tears? When was the last time? I don't know how emotional you are as a person, but when was the last time that you felt like you were kind of holding back or fighting back any tears? I don't really know, Google. Probably the kidney thing, maybe. Maybe that when, I, when I lost my boxing licence, that was probably one of the worst feelings of my life, yeah. Probably, I right now it was then. Um, then, yeah. Would you call yourself in general, are you an emotional person? You're, you're young, but you could still be emotional. Do you regard yourself in that way? Not, not really, I'm, I'm quite hard. I'm quite hard inside. I'm not really the most emotional person. Um, but my brother fights in that and they cry, I'm not going to lie. I've got little brother Richard. He's a, he's a, he's a machine, he is. And um, when he fights and then he cries, you know what I mean? But apart from that, I'm not, I'm not a very emotional person. Did you cry when your child was born? I didn't, but did you? I, I, did, hold him in. I did hold him in. I hold him in, I'm not going to lie. When I first seen her, especially. I, they didn't come out, but they were going to come out. See, I thought I would cry when my, my daughter was born, but I didn't. And I thought, is there something weird with me? Because everyone's going to me, yeah, you'll definitely cry. I was like, I didn't. And then I thought, well, is there something weird with me then? Am I the weird one? Because yeah. I didn't cry because your child was born, if that makes sense. I'm not going to say I did cry, but I, <laughs> I held them in. You held them in. Well, that's the question anyway, fighting back the tears. So you were fighting back the tears yeah. when your daughter was born? Definitely. Okay. Um, where do you think... And I mean, again, away from a boxing sense, where do you think your fighting spirit comes from? Where's that been instilled into you? Um, I don't know. I feel, I feel, when I was first born, I, feel, I, I, was born, I was born dead, wasn't I? As well, my mum told me. So I was, I was born dead and everything. I feel, like, I feel like I've been a fighter since day one, really. 
Um, maybe the traveller side, we're, we're all known for being like proper hard nuts. Um, I'm 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 Irish. I'm ha I'm obviously I'm English, but I'm Irish as well. So Irish are known to have big strong hearts and proper fighters and warriors. And I believe I'm a warrior. And um, I'm half English. English are warriors as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, probably maybe my heritage. Can I ask you to expand on that story when you said that you, in your words that you were you were born dead when you when you were born, if that makes sense? Could you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I was born with, with a cord around my neck. I, I was strangled. I, um, I was strangled inside. You know, I was born dead, and then they got me back to life. Thank God, here I am. Who's done this to us now? Do you know when I listened to you talk here, yeah, and the first thing you went. You haven't really experienced much in life. You actually said this on this podcast here when you say that, but can you say when you say that and then look at back actually what's happened in your 21 years of life, that that doesn't really match up to that, does it? Well, it's been a roller coaster, and it? it's been a roller coaster. Um, do you ever feel like, again, this is interesting just because of how young you are as well, and I keep saying that, but do you ever feel like you've got, you're ever fighting demons, like mentally? In your head, do you ever feel like you're fighting demons? I wouldn't say demons, but I feel like you do get a lot of haters in this boxing game. But um, as I said, I'm 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 quite I'm quite hard inside, so you get some nasty comments, especially on social media these days. There's there's, there's been people who's been killing themselves on social media because of all the nasty comments. But I feel like, thankfully, I'm quite strong inside. You know what I mean? Uh, and I believe in my ability. So when people comment that you're gonna get knocked out, this that this that. I laugh at most of them, really. I know I'm not them out. Does that play on your mind? Do you just, do you kind of just water off a duck's back, or does that affect you mentally? Kind of when you kind of seen that and social media is a good one to talk to you about as well, because you've grown up in a social media age. I have kind of on the border of both sides, but you've actually grown up in that era of social media. So does that affect you mentally? Like, I've obviously, you think about the comments, don't you? It don't affect me mentally, no, but I feel that you do think about the comments. But I feel like it makes me train harder. So I'm running, I'm thinking what they're saying. So I'm, like, I'm getting a bit worried when they're saying this. So I think oh, I've got to train harder now. So now like, I'm running harder, so I'm trying to, trying to prove the haters wrong. So you use that to inspire you, almost, that side of your life? Correct, exactly, exactly what you said there, yeah. You, you fight for your family and you fight for your your child now and kind of everyone around you that comes to support you, your community, etc. But who who fights for you? Who's in your corner? Like again, away from boxing, who have you got there twenty four seven, day or night, rain or shine, who's in Dennis McCann's corner that you've got unconditionally? Me dad, hundred percent. There's always a problem, he gets the phone call. If I crash a car, he gets the phone call. Whenever there's a problem at home, he gets the phone call. Oh, he goes mad. I, 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 I torture him, honestly. Genuinely, genuinely torture him. Now, my car's getting fixed now. He's driving me to the gym. He's been driving me for two weeks. He's moaning and groaning every day. He's, oh, I've been, I've been torturing him. But yeah, definitely my dad. He's, he's been a strong part of me, even in my boxing career. Um, Take me to the boxing gyms. and He believed in me since day one. He, he t what I'm doing now, exactly what I'm doing now, he told me I was going to do when I was, when I was 10 years old. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, your dad would be the obvious person that I would have gone to. Um, aside from your dad, I'm assuming kind of just your whole family in general, you seem a very, very, anyone can see that, seem very close-knit family, that they're always at your fights, all your family is at your fights. Um, so I'm assuming kind of your dad as the first person you mentioned, but I'm assuming kind of your whole family would are there in that capacity to kind of be in your corner, so to speak? 100%, especially my mum as well. She's she's always there. My older brother, Johnny, um, Richard, Jimmy. Yeah, we're all, we're all um, my little sister, Mamie, she's, she, she talks to everyone. But yeah, all of us, we are a very, very close family. It's interesting because you are like a like a, a boxing family as well. So it's like you you all understand each other's kind of ups and downs, especially in your your boxing career. But I'm sure outside of the ring as well that you kind of all support one another, especially you and your brothers. Exactly. Like we'll all sit down and watch my opponent together, and we'll all give a little say. Um, I'll give a little say, and like I think about what shots we throw here and there. Do you know what I mean? So 
like my trainers, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, brothers, I mean, dads, you know, what I mean? we're very, very close. What What do you think it is that that drives that fight in you? What What drives when you wake up in the morning? What is your your thing where you go right? I've got to do this today. I've got to do this tomorrow. I've got to do this this week. What What mentally drives that fight within you? I've got a lot of fire, fire in my belly, but. I want to give my family a better life. I want to, listen, we're not short enough, but I want to, I want to, um, I want to, wouldn't let my brothers ever go to work again. None of my, my dad, my, my, my mum wouldn't ever do anything. Like, none of us. I'd get whatever they wanted. Lambos. Whatever they wanted, I want, I want, I want to get out of them, get all of them. Well, I mean, what would you say, even though, again, and I keep saying this, like, re repeating myself on, on your age thing, but these answers are different from other people I've spoke to, but, like, of all the achievements you've done at 21 years old, I'm assuming everything has come with some sort of fight. You haven't kind of been given anything, but what is your kind of your proudest moment? I'm, I'm going to assume that, aside from kind of what you've accomplished in boxing, that it is going to be um, your child, because that is normally what, people would say, but am I right in saying that? A hundred percent, listen, I'm blessed to have a kid, that, that I have a lovely little baby girl like that. Some people can't even have kids, do you know what I mean? So I'm very, very lucky. But another one of my proudest moments was probably my last fight when I won, won the WBC international title. That was a very, very, very big moment for me. But I've still got my eyes in that. I want, I want to make my dad proud and get that, get that world title from him. That's my, that's, my, that's my biggest dream. Is that for yourself or for your dad? You mentioned yeah, that being for your dad. For me as well, but obviously, yeah. but for my dad, I, well, I can't wait just to see his face when he's put that, ba that belt around his waist. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's, yeah, I, know, I know he'd cry. That's my, that's my biggest one for me. I really, really want to do that. But that that's, a, that's a thing to, to do. Obviously, you're fighting for every time you go in the ring, you're fighting for your, yourself and whatever you can achieve. But the, the fact that, you know, you probably book that alongside he'd be as happy for you as you're happy for you uh, if you accomplish those things definitely I mean, dad had a very bad upbringing very bad upbringing he never had mum or dad and stuff like that so uh, he left home at 11 like he, 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 he like he's been there he's been hungry walking the streets and a pair of pimps and stuff like that uh, back in the day but that's why he, you know, he gives us a good life do you know what I mean and that's why I want to make like really really make him proud What's the one thing your dad's taught you that you will make sure that's instilled into your daughter and any other future kids you have? I feel like this day and age, I feel like the, the kids are losing a lot of respect. Um, like I've always been teach respect, um, hold hold doors open for old people. And if I see an older person than me sitting uh, standing up and I'm sitting down, I'll, I'll stand straight up. So I'm sit down, or if I'm on a, either if I'm on a train or a bus, wherever I am. Um, or even in a car, I'll, like, I'll let them sit in the front, I'll sit in the back, even if it's my car. I feel that's, that's, that's where we've been brought up. So those are the kind of things that you would, like I said, what you've been directly taught, not just from, obviously, your dad, but your mum as well, it would be things that you would uh, kind of implement into your, your child. Manners, definitely. Like, I've seen kids this day like, swearing in front of their mum and dad. I wouldn't even swear in front of my mum and dad. Mom, my mum would probably tell me. And um, I feel like the kids this day and age, they got no appreciation. I've seen kids, like dad going and buying a thousand pounds per thousand pound per shoes and this that. My dad only give me a fiver. <laughs> it's a bit of a tighty. But you, you, honestly, you make. I know we're going a little bit off subject here with this, but yeah. I think you you make a good point about that because, like, when I was even your age or even younger than that, these things weren't really a thing. Like you're right, people going buying their kids like a thousand pound pair of trainers. I mean, it, it, it sounds mad. It does sound mad, but there's also an argument that if you've got the money, the kids, why not? I see that side of it as well, but I suppose to teach people the, or your children the... Old school way of yeah, life. Yeah, the old school way, exactly right. The old school way of life, 100%. Mm. is the best way. Yeah. Okay, well, Dennis, listen, appreciate your time on Raw The Fight Within podcast. Um, yeah, it's been a different kind of chat, as you can uh, get as we was kind of going into it. And uh, don't worry, like, whenever you're fighting next, we'll uh, get back to the normal boring stuff that I ask you. But I've learned a lot from this, because I've known you for a few years, but there's a lot of stuff that you said there that I didn't know myself. Yeah.
It's because the fans are a little bit of a, a bit of a brief for me, isn't it? Yeah. Let them know me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, this has been Coogan Cassius with Dennis McCann for Raw, the fight within. We will catch you soon. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you soon. Over and out, baby. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.